Okay. So beagle bone is a controller. That's a beagle bone on the screen. Uh, it's pretty similar. Oh, you've got one. Pretty similar to a Raspberry Pi. So we were talking about my matrix before and how it has high channel counts and all this sort of stuff. And this was the other option that I pursued in order to find a way to do it without buying three P12s or two fixed lights. Not that there's anything wrong with P12s or fixed lights, it's just an economic thing from my perspective. So during 2014, I heard that it was possible to drive large amounts of pixels of beagle bones. And there were some people floating around doing it but not in the crystal space. Um, the premise was basically lots of outputs are cheap, uh, but no software existed to integrate it with my display. So I bought a beagle bone and an RGB 123 <coughs> tape, which is a commercial add-on add -on board, um, but I couldn't even get it to light up pixel. <laughs> so that was a bit of a failure. So six months ago, um, sort of after everyone had got their displays going, I bought a couple of beagle bones and a couple of capes and sent them to the Falcon guys to encourage them to maybe consider um, adding the capability for Falcon Player on the beagle bones to drive these pixels because they had shown interest in getting pixels driven directly off the Raspberry Pi, um, but they'd come into lots of limitations on the Raspberry Pi. So it worked, and so here we are put it on display over there. So what's a beagle bone? So I'm talking about the beagle bone black in particular, which is the few different beagle bones. Uh, similar to a Raspberry Pi, $70 Australian delivered from L14 in Sydney. The main differences that I am aware of is there's no HDMI output on the beagle bone, so it's no good for the <coughs> projector. Um, it has less USB ports, which can be a challenge if you're trying to plug lots of things into it. Uh, but it does have on-board storage. It has four gigabytes of flash on the board. And it has special PRUs, which I'll talk about in a minute. And shortly, it will be able to run Falcon Pi Play. We're running it today, but it's not productized yet. I'll release a new version of the board. So. so this is the board that's passing around the room. Um, nothing particularly of note. It's all standard sort of stuff. 512 mega RAM, well I think the pies is not that much these days. So what are these PRUs? I don't know much about this stuff. So if I'm saying something wrong, then or maybe I'm glossing over detail, that's fine. Um, there's two programmable real-time units, which are two dedicated um, processors that are separate from the CPU. And those processors are the things that make driving lots of pixels possible at all off these boards. You can't drive all types of pixels off this board, or at least not easily. So in the first instance, there's no 2801 support. 2801 to apply double the number of data lines, which will require different um, different capes and boards and software. It's possible, but no one's doing it. They can also be used to drive the panels that we've got over here. Um, and this is why we're using BeagleBone, not a Pi. So capes are little circuit boards that you plug onto the top of the board, like you can do with the Pi. There's lots of different capes that determine um, exactly what you're going to do with the beagle bone. So I'm aware of four capes that can drive pixels. Uh, although anyone can make a cape and design and build it. Uh, the bottom one there, Pixel Bone, Smart Alec in uh, South Australia, whipped up in a couple of weeks and we got it sent off. And we've got one over there running. There are capes with um, Power injection and case without power injection. Some of the boards have additional features like DMX outputs or real time clocks so that your board keeps the time when it, even after it's been powered off. Some of them power your beagle bone. Some of them have an LCD screen or test buttons or 
power outputs for fans in your box. There's also little nice things depending on exactly which cape and how much you want to spend, really. So this is an example of the Falcon F16B. Um, the beagle bone sits underneath in the top right of it. It's got um, some of those additional features I was talking about. But the basic premise is it does 16 uh, outputs with 600 680 pixels per output. Um, the pricing will probably be around 70 US dollars. And there's an optional LCD screen that can go on the top of that board. It's not even photo, but it's over here on the box. Uh, I think I forgot to mention is the additional, yeah. You can plug two extra boards into two expansion boards into this board through these header connectors and bring it up to 48 outputs per beagle bone and that doesn't reduce the number of pixels per output you can run. So you can run 48 outputs of 60, 680 pixels now we're talking, which is enormous. <laughs> so if you're putting a really high, insanely big matrix and you've got a sequencer that can do that much, E131, then this board or one of the other boards is um, probably the better option. So, Daryl, that, when you said before that initially you, with that board, the Falcon, it could do. So, these are two different boards. They're two different boards, yes. yes. Completely different. The first board in the last presentation yep. doesn't use BeagleBone, it has its own onboard processes. Right. Um, this board uses a BeagleBone, which then changes the limits about what the processors are capable of. Right. And because it's got the PRU, the real-time processors in it, it can drive many more pixels at the same time. So when you add the expansion boards to this one, it doesn't limit, doesn't pull down the number of pixels. Yeah. It increases the number of pixels you can do in total. Is anything changing the way you set it up in your sequencer or? No. So I'll, I'll get a little bit more into that um, a bit further through the presentation. I'm just sort of starting on the hardware side. Um, sorry, mate. You said that was $70 approximately US. Yep. Is that pre-made or we're going to build ourselves? Uh, no, that's actually pre-made. You still need the Beagle Bone. You need to buy a $70 Beagle Bone to put on the bottom so of it. 140 yeah. bucks in America. That's right. Now, let's be clear. It's not as friendly <coughs> as your off-your-shelf control. <coughs> like your Pixlite, your, your P12, or even the previous Falcon controller, the F16B2. This one you're going to get, you're going to have to install Falcon Player on it, you're going to have to configure Falcon Player. You can configure Falcon Player as an E131 controller, but you're going to have to play around a bit more, and it takes a lot longer to boot when you power it on. They're the key differences as far as I'm concerned at this point in time. So the Falcon guys also made a little 4 port controller. Um, yeah, I suppose the, the, I don't know the price point of this board right off the top of my head. Uh, I suppose the problem is that Eagle Bone has an underlying cost. Um, and so the value per output on this board is a lot lower than the other boards. But if you compare this to the other small controllers on the market, uh, this one probably stacks up pretty well again. You know, it's got four outputs of 680 pixels per output. So then we move into some of the boards that don't have power capabilities. So this is the first board um, that I bought, and I, you know, mid last year, from the RGB123 guys in, um, in the US. And they're not Christmas guys at all. They're just trying to drive panels and pixels and, and stuff for you know, arty type displays. Uh, so this one has 48 outputs with no power injection and they sell it for about 70 US dollars. And for me, this is still interesting because when you're driving that many pixels, it's hard to get all the power done through the board anyway. So you might just decide, well, I'm not going to do any power through my board. I'm just going to do it all around the side of my board. And this is the pixel bone of Smart Alley in South Australia design. Um, you know, 
started it off in a couple of days, sent it off to get manufacturers, sold it on the SMBs, and away you go, 24 outputs. I believe he's selling them for around about 40 bucks, if anyone, if anyone needs one. So the other, so we talked about panels, right? The panel over here is saying it's in mini day two at the moment. There's currently only one cape that I'm aware of that will um, drive this stuff, and designed by Trammel Hudson for non Christmas stuff. So it has eight outputs and it can drive 64 panels at once. It, there's, there's lots of panels on the market that all look the same, but there's detail behind it, such as the, the scan rate, and so on. The, the trick at the moment is we know that these type of panels in particular work. The Ray Wu $11 ones, also made by other people, but with those specs, we don't yet know, because this is all very new, about whether we can drive some of the other panels. So we know, for instance, we can't drive the P5 panels that have four times the density because they need an additional data line. But we don't know if we can, we, we don't know really about all the other panels on the market yet. We'll get there. People will buy them and test them and work out, you know, can we just do software changes to support them or, or do we need hardware changes? So I just want to warn you about that. Don't just go and buy any panel. Make sure you buy one that someone else has made work or be willing to be a guinea pig and fail, potentially. So this is a picture of the Octo Scroller boards that. Um, um, some of you have had a look at and bought today. Um, it's got one chip and all the rest is just connectors. Very easy to solder because it's all through whole solder. And that's what, um, for those who can't see my display over on the side, that's what six panels look like on my dining room table with a dodgy photo. So if we get on to the software side of it, um, I touched on this a little a few minutes ago, but the basic option at this point is to run Falcon Play. A new version coming out shortly that will install natively on the Beagle Bone onto its inbuilt um, uh, storage, and it will use a little SD card rather than a USB stick like the Pi uses. So it can run both pixels and panels, although not at the same time, because you need different capes depending on whether you're going to run pixels or panels. You can put it in bridge mode, which will make it essentially an E131 controller, like everyone used to, like you, you know, you, you, um, uh, your schedulers will send data to. Or you can put it in a master-slave mode, where you upload your sequences to both your existing Pi and your new Beagle bones, and they all did last year, and it worked quite well. Yep, I did. So let's, uh, yeah. <laughs> let's jump into, uh, <laughs> it is just like, uh, <laughs> this, this was about 11 o'clock last night. We're playing last night, mate. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get that off. Thanks, <laughs> 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 uh, See, I didn't, see all my stuff was here, so I couldn't go and uh, log into it last night to get the screenshots. So this is Falcon Player, or Falcon Pi Player, as it used to be called. Um, ben wanted me to do a little uh, yes, introduction no. to this, so now that I'm here, <laughs> I'm completely unprepared. But basically what you do with Falcon Player is you go into the file manager, the 
you upload your sequences, and these are some of the sequences I have online from last year. Um, you upload your uh, audio or video if you need any, and then you can go in and create playlists. And so, here's my 2014 show playlist that was made up of six dodgily named sequences. Um, and then what you can do is you can go and put a scheduler, and my schedule is completely empty at the moment, because I didn't want to run random stuff in here this weekend. And you can set your start dates um, and your end times and whether you want to repeat it, and much like you would do in um, your LSP scheduler or your Vixen scheduler or your x -Lite scheduler, only this doesn't have to run on your computer. It runs on your, I don't know how much pies are, 30 or $40 pies, um, Raspberry Pi, and you can turn your computer off at night. And there's a pie coming around the, the table at the moment. Um, the other thing you need to do is set up all of your channel outputs, and this can be a little bit um, strange if it's in a different format to what your sequencer and scheduler are currently using. So, but it, it makes sense to me because I use X-Lights, yeah. so. With Lightstroke Pro, if you've got a gap in your channel, it'll do weird things on your display. The channel has to be through from one to 1,000. You can't go one to 100 and then start at 200 and go to 2,000. Unless you put, what I've done is just put a dummy controller in. So it doesn't actually play any channel, but it sees it. Um, and it's also got a testing mode. Whether it will work. Oh, no, because I'm sending data from X lights as well as from the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you see that it is flashing uh, red occasionally. Why so? Um, so that's the two second look at the Pi player, or the Falcon player. Um, what I just wanted to show quickly, um, sorry, I've got to find the IP address of my Beagle Bones to show you. I just don't want to show you all the mess in the spreadsheet. So now we're logged into one of Beagle Bones. It looks exactly the same, except we're running in bridge mode up at the top, which means that it's acting as an E131 controller at this point. So there are no sequences uploaded or anything like that. But if we go into channel outputs, in this one we have LED panels. And this is really all you need to configure your outputs for your panel. So you tell it how many wide and how many high it is, and then you say um, which output, so O-1, because I've got everything plugged into the first output on the, the Optotroller case, and then the P-1, P-2, P-3, P-4, P-5, P-6, simply the order that the panels are chained together is. And then I say what channel I want to start um, this out in my setup, and I'll just go on channel one, because this is the only thing on this um, on this controller, and that's it. They've abstracted the detail away in a good way. Mm. You know sometimes people abstract detail away and it makes it more complex or limiting? Yep. I quite like the way they've done that. 
So now we've just logged into a different BeagleBone, one of the ones that's running um, uh, Pixel K. And so here we go. Um, this is, looks more like your traditional Pixel controller output configuration screen. So up in the top left, uh, top right, we choose um, which sort of cape we're running. Um, and it doesn't have to exactly match your cape. What it needs to match is the wiring pinout on your cape. So for instance, um, Alex, Smart Alex <coughs> pixel bone cape uh, matches one of those. I think it's the, the um, IGB cape at the bottom. And I think that's the one that the IGB 123 cape matches as well. Okay. Um, the Falcon guys decided to do slightly different um, wiring mappings wow. to suit the um, circuit boards. And so they've got their own cape types in there. Um, and so all you really have to configure is um, this screen and then configure some input universes, admittedly on the output screen, but no doubt they'll make this a bit clearer in future releases. Um, so I So we can, I can show you that really quickly. Now I'm still running XLife 3. Um, I only find that time to upgrade to 4 and, and think about 4 yet, but I will. So if we have a look at XLife over here, um, what I've got set up is a model for the P10 matrix. Um, which is pretty much the same as setting up any other matrix. So each uh, individual panel uh, one, two, three, So well, you don't have to worry about that because you've told the Falcon player what order your panels are configured. So all you need to worry about is um, what your start channel number is in your all your universes and how big the matrix is. Everything else is taken care of by the octo scroller at this point in time. Oh, sorry, the uh, power complaint. Um, and so, yeah, you can do whatever effects on it you like. something different on the, on the screen. <coughs> Any other questions? So if you wanted to just change the word, it was effect like you put in Sydney. Yeah. So you wanted to do Merry Christmas. Just a yeah, in there you just type in line one Merry Christmas. Yeah, that's, that's basically it. So this time it um, scrolls across the screen. Oops, I've missed time Merry Christmas, but you get the idea anyway. <laughs> <coughs> um, yeah, I find x -Life makes all this sort of stuff very easy to do. Um, but to be fair, I haven't really used the other sequences. So. Yeah. Yeah. And you can change your fonts and all the bits of features. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really. X-Lite 4 is on this side and it allows you three, uh, sorry, four lines. Um, X-Lite 4 allows you multiple lines. Right, now. okay. Fair enough. Any you want. Hmm. Okay. <coughs> Thanks for listening, guys.